And let me hide these video controls so you can be sure you can see everything. There we go. Okay, so you should be seeing uh, the open shot window here. And basically, if you're already familiar with video editing software, I would go ahead and use what you're familiar with. Um, this will do what you need to do. It's powerful, uh, but it's a, a, it can be a little glitchy. It can be a little time consuming. Uh, but I get you started and give you some tips and tricks to avoid, um, you know, having it do things you don't expect it to do. Um, and so first it gives you five tracks. You can add more tracks here. You can rename the tracks for everything I've been doing. I haven't needed more than three tracks, but so I get rid of the ones I don't need. And then you can see on the window down here at the bottom. Now I've got a bunch of dead space. So I'll move it like that so I can see the video bigger. Uh, but what you want to do, all the images that you're gonna feed into OpenShot, uh, you wanna process them ahead of time. All the videos that you're gonna feed in here, you wanna process them ahead of time. And what I mean by process is put them in a folder somewhere, name them what you wanna name them. And once you start importing them into OpenShot, do not change what folder they're in, do not change what they're named because it will lose them. And if you lose a bunch of them, it's a mess and you're, every, all, everything you've done in here is basically worthless. So everything needs to stay where it is once you do this. So I would create one folder for your video and I would save this project into that folder. Um, and then you can save project as right here. And then I would go from there and not move anything. Um, and so let me go ahead and bring some content in here so you can start seeing how that works. Um, I've got a bunch of these now from Dendro and other classes. So let me open one up here. Okay. Um, and so let's say here, I'll open one up that has video. I opened up lab eight, but that doesn't have much live video. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me Does go. it let you separate the audio tracks from the video tracks? You can separate the audio tracks from the video tracks. I'll show you how to do that. Let, let me work with the short leaf pine video that you already watched on Monday. That'll be an easy one to work with. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring in a few of those segments. And so you can see them appearing. I'm just dragging them and dropping them from an open folder that you can't see. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, and so I've brought in three of them here. And so now I can drag them down and I can drop them onto this track here and I can start linking them up end to end and it'll kind of auto click. It'll butt in there if you want them to go end to end there. Um, it's a little glitchy with the playback, but you can see you can play to see where you are. It may. It may lag at some point. Um, you can zoom in and out right here to see more or less of your video. Uh, sometimes once you've copied in a bunch of stuff, it'll start jamming you up right here and you wanna put more stuff in and there's not room. Uh, when that happens, I'll just click the time bar over to here. I'll copy this, I'm hitting control C and then I'll paste it. And if I paste it, it pastes to the new time. So just paste new stuff out here and it gives you more time. Then you can delete it back out of your way and you've bought yourself more time. If you want to make a really detailed cut on something, um, you need to um, get, I'm zooming out, you got to zoom way in. So if you want to make a real detailed cut, you can be within a few seconds and make sure you get that exactly what you want. You can cut video off right here. Uh, sorry, it's this snip. So I can slip this, snip this clip in half if I want. So I can snip it here. I can move over here. I can snip it again and I can delete something in the middle that I don't want. So that's how you would delete something that you don't want. Um, and uh, so Katie, you were just asking, how do you get rid of audio? You click the video clip you wanna get rid of the audio on, you right click it, separate audio. I've only ever messed with single clip. Sometimes separating the audio, it'll get a little bit glitchy on you. It'll make the video harder to work with after that. It's like the software needs more processing power or something. Um, so, you may want to do that late in the game when you're editing, but here now you can see I've got the video track down here on the bottom on track one. I've got the audio from that track up here on track three now. And until you start clipping it and cutting it and editing it, it's kind of handy because it shows you the sounds. So you can go and you can find a pause and you could cut that out or whatever you need to do, or you can just now delete it. And now I have this video clip down here, but I don't have any audio. If you want to shorten it, so say say this red line where I'm at now, say that's where I actually wanted my video to start. I just grab it here and I drag it over and now it's going to start right there and you can position it more carefully, less carefully. 
Um, and then you can move the whole thing back over here, back earlier. You can see it moved away on this end. And then same thing, you can cut it from the other end as well, shorten it. Uh, one thing I've been using a lot, you can go to fade, entire clip, and you can fade it in and out fast if you want fades at the beginning and end. I wait till the very end to do that because it messes them up if you cut them more or anything like that. So I do this last. You can go to volume if we had left the volume here and you can fade the volume in and out if you want to use that as an effect. I haven't messed with the transformations. This software does a lot more sophisticated stuff than I've really um, messed with. But when you're editing this, you're not editing your raw video. It's just manipulating the video in your package. This video file, I didn't mind deleting the audio off it because I still have that MP4. I still have the video saved. It's not messing with that at all for me. Um, other things I've messed with is time. And so you can make the video go faster. I would do everything else you want to do on it first before you do this because it can get a little glitchy, especially with backward. Uh, it has trouble processing backward. But you can see right now it's a pretty long clip. But if I go fast forward 8x, now it's a much shorter clip. And it, it may have trouble playing it at first. But if it will play here, you can see Jason there going real quick. You can see it's thinking. It, it, it may have to process a big change like that to a video before it shows it to you smoothly there. Um, let me bring in a picture so we can see how that works. And so let me go find a picture somewhere else to drag in here. Uh -huh. Let me see here. This I'll grab some pictures of Sonder Egger Pine now to bring in. Uh, but I'm going to bring in a couple pictures. And here's one important trick. I, I have no idea what this image sequence is. I've just been clicking no. I have no idea if that's the right option, but it seems to work fine. So I have one that's landscape right here, you can see, and one that's uh, portrait, vertical like that. Often what you're gonna see happening is you're gonna bring in your portrait pictures that look portrait on your computer like this vertical, and they're gonna turn them back sideways. Uh, and there's some ways you can rotate them in here, um, I've been using kind of another approach. Um, I'm popping up a, a window you can't see, but I can just read it to you. What I, what I did, I Googled JPEG auto rotate. JPEG auto rotate. I downloaded that freeware program. And what I'm able to do then, once you've got it downloaded, you can right click a folder. And when it brings up the window that says open all that different stuff, it says one option will be auto rotate JPEGs in folder and subfolder. And I've been doing that so that it sends them vertical for me uh, like I want them in here. So that's the trick, one trick to get it there. There may be other ways. I don't, I don't know what the other ways are. But let me bring it in here and show you some of these other features you may want to use. Uh, with all my videos, I've just had one video going. I haven't played with multiple videos for the most part. But I have done a lot of photo overlaying over top of them. So let me go over that. So you can see my time bar is right here in front of the photo. And I'm, I've been putting my photos on other tracks like this just so I can keep track of them. You could put it down here in the same track, uh, but you can see if you want to overlay it. Now I've got the video playing. If I had left the audio in the video, it would be playing uh, in the background. And now my photo is right on the top middle. And so if I keep my time bar before the photo, say I want this photo to appear further right or further left. If I have my time back here and I set it up to be further right or further left, what it's going to do is it's going to start it right where it is here in the middle of the screen and it's going to gradually move it to where I told it to move it to. So you'll get this weird effect where as you're watching the video, this photo will slowly drift right or left, which uh, if you want to do it, that's how you do it. But most of the time you don't want to do that. So you just make sure your time is clicked in front of the photo, click it here, say it's too big. You've got all these options over here on the left. So you can scale it on the X and Y axis. So if I go 0.5 and 0.5, I'm scaling it down to half its original size, which would be a quarter its original area. I can click back into it now anywhere and we'll, we should see that. And again, the biggest downside to this program is it takes a while to think about things. So there you can see my photos a lot smaller, but then say you don't want it right there over Jason's face like that. Um, I'm gonna move my cursor. I always move it back beforehand, otherwise you'll get weird effects you don't intend. Make sure you've clicked the right thing. And then I've got location X and Y here. And I can never remember which is negative and which is positive, but you're gonna wanna stay for both vertical and horizontal movement um, within probably 0.3 or so. So if I go negative 0.3, and then I do the X location, negative 0.1, what I can see then when I click back on it, it's gonna have moved over and up or down. 
but I just always try it and then I remember which way it is. So in this case, negative numbers move it to the left and negative numbers move it up. So if I did positive, it would move it to the right. And if I did positive, it would move it down. And if that's not where you want it, you, you see you want it more left and more up, you just click back over here and then you, you can change those again. Um, you can crop videos here too. That's up here, crop height, crop width. I've used that a few times. You can tinker around with that or crop X, crop Y to show just part of a video. Honestly, it'd be easier to do that outside of all this. So that's photos, that's videos. Uh, the last thing that I've been using a lot is the title features. So I go to title. I haven't messed with the animated titles at all. I've used just the unanimated titles. And so I click that, it gives you a bunch of options. These are all SVG files uh, and they're editable to some extent, not to a huge extent, but you pick one that's kind of close to what you like. Um, it depends, like this one is only gonna easily give you one line. So if you need multiple lines, you may wanna pick another one with more lines. You can change the fonts on them. You can change the text color. I've been leaving background color alone for the most part because if it overlays something, if you're trying to overlay text over a video and you change the background color, right now these background colors will be clear if I overlay it on a video. Um, but then you, you can save it as something. Uh, you can type in different lines of text. Um, and then when you're done with that, you just click save. And if you wanna use the same title later, when you go back in to uh, add another title, you'll see it here somewhere, you can click it and you can save it as something else once you've got it adjusted to what you want. So you kind of work up the first one how you want, then all the ones after that are easy. Then I just drag and drop the title in, I put it wherever I want. I can treat it like a photo, so I could move it up and down, shrink it, expand it with all these scale options. So everything I just did with a photo, I could do with the title. Um, and there I click over it, it's thinking, but you can see the title over here. So that obviously wouldn't be the best font color, but if I move it further this way, if you wanted the title to stand alone like an intro title, um, you can see that's gonna work better for this particular option once it updates and gets rid of JSON. So you can see the downside of this thing is it, it does have a fair bit of lag sometimes. Um, what else is helpful? Oh, when you wanna go make a video, you can just click export here or file export here. Uh, for a one to five minute video, on average, it's been taking one to five minutes to export. Uh, but if it takes you 30 minutes, it may still be okay. Um, this thing seems to make pretty big file sizes, you know, you could put stuff in here, like, like I've put in a 25 megabyte video, added a title to it, and I've output it, and it's been 100 megabytes. So this thing's making files bigger somehow, I have no idea how, uh, but the quality is fine. Everything I've been doing for Dendro in this class that I've been doing has been through here, so it's worked fine. Uh, the only thing I haven't showed you is sound, but you can drag an MP3 or other audio file in here, and you can do all the same stuff we just did with it here. Um, where you, you set it on its own track and you can sync it up and whatever. So any, any questions? That was a lot fast, but again, I'm recording this so you can go back to it. I don't think so. Um, I'm having trouble opening some of the files, but one of my friends, I think, did, Dax, did you record it on an iPhone? Uh, yes, I went and did two record. So for the section that I sent y'all, I turned it